Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announcing today that residents receiving unemployment benefits will soon be required once again to show proof they're looking for a job. Wow. Joining us now, Mark Short, former chief of staff to Vice President Mike Pence. He's now a partner of the Coalition to Protect American Workers. It's a group he's headed up focused on fighting back against the Biden economic agenda and their tax hikes. I want to get to their tax hikes in a little while. What do you think uh, Governor DeSantis is putting a work requirement on unemployment benefits, Mark Short? In your judgment, will that raise the unemployment rate or lower the unemployment rate in Florida? Well, Larry, I think we both know that it's absolutely the right policy. I think you've seen that the uh, exorbitant unemployment insurance benefits have become a damper on getting people back to work. Uh, in fact, you've seen South Dakota, Montana governors as well also pursue policies that don't match the unemployment benefits any longer. Uh, we see it particularly in the hospitality industry where uh, it's harder to get people back into into the labor market. And uh, I know that you were on the side of angels back at the end of the Trump administration when there was discussions of COVID relief packages and saying that those sorts of benefits were too generous because it will give incentives for people not to come back to work. So we shouldn't be surprised when you extend these benefits indefinitely. That's exactly what's happened. Yeah. Yeah, According was... to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, they say that there's still $2.1 trillion in unspent money from the various COVID relief uh, packages that are out outstanding, Larry. That's a key point. That's a really key point, Mark. Uh, you know, I was in favor of the first relief package um, back in April of 2020, but the next several, no. The more unemployment benefits, yeah. I think, the more unemployment you're going to have. And the longer the benefits, the longer you're going to have it. Now, let me ask you a question. This is a related question. Um, suppose the federal government, suppose Biden put work requirements on unemployment uh, benefits. Would the unemployment rate go up or down? Just ask him. Of course, it would go down, Larry. And as you know, we've tried that many times. Unfortunately, some of the liberal courts have stepped in to uh, to prevent it. I know when um, when Mike Pence was governor of Indiana, they put the work requirements on on Medicaid benefits as well. But I think that uh, certainly it would be the right policy, and uh, it's only what's what's intended by the the support that's given so people can get a job, but they need to be looking for a job. You know, this whole business, Mark, of creating welfare benefits, uh, whatever the program is child tax credits, dependent care, K through 12, expanding Medicare, expanding Medicaid, particularly Medicaid, uh, there are no work requirements. We used to have work requirements. I had Gingrich on this show a couple nights ago. He was there negotiating bipartisan with Bill Clinton. Now, Team Biden, uh, I don't know whether it's President Sanders or President AOC or President Biden or whatever, um, they're stripping all that away. I think it's the most pernicious thing that they're doing, Mark Short. Larry, I agree. I think one other element of this, though, I think we have to be sympathetic to is there are a lot of parents who actually are staying home because we haven't opened our schools. Mm -hmm. And as you know from our COVID task force discussions, there's no reason that schools shouldn't be open. Uh, schools should have been open a long time ago. There's no, if we were following the science, they would have never closed down schools in the first place. And so there is there is a percentage of that unemployment that represents, in particular, um, uh, married moms who are basically staying home to take care of kids. That I think we uh, the best policy we could do is actually open the schools. We'll get them back to work too. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. Now, in terms of your your new, your new think tank here, did you know? You probably did. But did you know that if President Biden's tax policy goes through, we will have higher taxes than China? Did you know that? I mean, we will have a higher corporate tax. Yes. We will have a higher capital gains tax. And we will have the most incredible inheritance tax, death tax, because of these policies. So since I've been asking you all these puzzling questions, um, do we really want to have higher taxes than China? Is that part of our policy? 
Yeah, and I think, Larry, actually, I made that point last time on your show that we'd be higher than communist China if we go back to the 28 percent. And if you add on state and local taxes that corporations pay and they don't pay in other countries, we would actually be number one, again, the highest tax country just on the corporate rate side, not even adding in the capital gains and the state taxes that you talk about. You know, there's so much bad policy that's pushed forward in this tax relief package. One piece that I think you would do a great job uh, highlighting is that the Biden team has suggested that they pay $80 billion to hire tax collectors. They are IRS. <laughs> right. Will somehow magically generate $700 billion in revenue. There's no justification for that. And the irony is, at the same time they're looking to defund the police, they're looking to pay $80 billion of your tax dollars to hire more tax collectors, the IRS. Yeah, they're just going to chase waitresses around. They think they're going to chase wealthy people around, but wealthy yeah. people are going to be so far ahead of them uh, with tax avoidance. And anyway, this stuff goes on all the time as a revenue grab, which never materializes, right? It's a phony program to begin with. It just gives the IRS too much bloody power. Um, Mark Schroeder, I want to, uh, final question, I want to ask you some. We've been talking a lot on the show about the remarkable speech that uh, Senator Tim Scott gave uh, as his rebuttal to the State of the Union. And my view is he pushed Biden and Harris and the woke left back on their heels. It's the first time someone's really hit them hard, and they don't know how to handle it. Now, I want to know what you think about that speech. And related to that, Mark, why can't Republicans and conservatives and a lot of people back what Tim Scott did? He's programmatic. He's busting myths about uh, critical race and wokeism and the end of history. And uh, he's also got a good economic platform. I mean, to me, it was the clearest, most elegant post-election. Why aren't everybody talking about that and getting behind him? And we just had Ben Carson on, who's saying the same thing. Those are powerful people. Why aren't we doing this? Larry, uh, you're preaching the choir. I think that uh, Tim Scott did a phenomenal job. He focused on the issues, and I think too much of uh, right now the debate in the Republican Party is on personalities and differences. When we provide a clear contrast to where the Biden administration and Pelosi and Schumer want to go, that's a winning issue for us. And I think that Tim Scott did it masterfully. And he's also uniquely positioned to show the hypocrisy. You know, it was only a year ago, in the wake of the tragedy of George Floyd, that Tim Scott proposed his policing bill that was filibustered. And yet today, what you hear of Democrats is they say that the filibuster is a Jim Crow relic. Just right. a year later, they filibustered his bill to provide policing reform. And he's in a unique position to show their hypocrisy. Can we pursue the Tim Scott agenda? Can we pursue the Ben Carson agenda? Instead of having, and I'm serious about this, a circular Republican firing squad. Could we do that? Because I think if we do that, we're going to sweep in the midterms. But if we don't do that, Mark, I worry about the midterms. Larry, you're 100 percent right. Even look at, uh, you know, in 2016 when Donald Trump ran, he brought in a whole new voter. But it's that combination of traditional Republicans with the voters that Donald Trump brought in from a populist appeal on immigration in China that is a winning formula for us. And if we stick to that, as opposed to the personality differences, we will win again in 2022 and in 2024. All right. Mark Short, thanks very much for the wisdom. Appreciate it. Great to see you again.